up, Doom Nation? Welcome back to another Doomed Review. It is Skaggs here. No captain today. Uh, I am with the Scarlet Witch herself, <laughs> Shane. <Hi. laughs> and uh, we are going to be doing a Doomed Review of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. No captain, like I said. He is not seeing the movie, I think, until May 15th, so way too long uh, <laughs> to, be to, waiting, <laughs> to be waiting for him. It'll be old news by then, so sorry, Cap. Let's get into it. I enjoyed it. You were you uh, of all people were <laughs> like waiting for this movie, you know, were Since excited. Yeah, that was a long time. That <laughs> I was know, like it was a really long time to wait. Yeah, over a year since we last saw Wanda Maximoff. And um, it's been a long time even since Doctor Strange had his own movie. He's only yeah. really just been in the Avengers uh, Infinity War and Endgame stuff. And then Spider Man. And Spider Man, yeah, so he kinda had like a secondary role in a couple of films until he got his own. Um, I don't know, what'd you think? I definitely enjoyed it. Um, I went in with no expectations, just because. How did hit. you go in with no expectations? I just we just said that you've been waiting for this for longer I than anybody. I have been waiting, but I only wait because I love the Scarlet Witch. I didn't care for anything else otherwise. Um, I went in with no expectations because, just based off of what I've seen so far, so many people are disappointed because things they expected to happen didn't happen. If you go in with no expectations, you can't be disappointed. MJ said it herself in Spider-Man. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. <laughs> so, like, everybody was expecting this person to show up and this person to show up. So if they don't show up, then you're upset. True. I can't be upset because I didn't expect anything. Okay. I expected Scarlet Witch. I expected Doctor Strange. I expected the multiverse. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was expecting a lot because they build it. As to make it this seem. massive movie in the MCU that was going to be building upon so much stuff. And I guess it kind of was, but I'll be straight up honest with you guys from the get-go. I was disappointed really? in the entire movie. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to say that there wasn't good stuff that happened in the movie. There was. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, I didn't really enjoy the story of it. It felt a little clunky. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, you I... Good. think with that much extra time to take to editing and supposedly they refilmed a bunch of stuff mm -hmm. that they would have been able to build a better story but i think they're mostly focusing on all right wandavision's done let's get into this next part sure. and they're building to something else obviously um but there definitely could have been more to so it besides just her being the bad guy right. and that's it so I guess you kind of called it. I think back when we were reviewing or just talking about Marvel in general, I think you said many times, you're like, I think Wanda's going to be the bad guy of Multiverse of Men. So the pull of her deemed, seat, you were correct. Yeah. Since WandaVision, it has always been deemed that she would be a villain. I still don't kind of see her as a villain. Yes, she's not a good person, but she had reason. Yeah, so I do think I do think the the general story is that obviously Wanda picks up from um, Wanda WandaVision, Vision. and she had her children, which she created them, didn't she? They were they were never really real children. So she said it herself: her children exist in every universe, but hers. Right, but in so her universe, they her never universe, really they never happened. But obviously, it was stated: whatever you dream, you see yourself in a dream. That's you in another universe. So she's dreaming of her children and her being with her children. So they are out there, but unfortunately, and she got to experience life with them, even if it was just pretend. Right. But for her, that was reality. Sure. That was as close to an her actual reality. reality as she can get. Mm -hmm. And then it was destroyed. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I feel like in terms of motivations of characters and villains, love is always a good motivating mm -hmm. factor as opposed to like, I'm the bad guy because me bad and you good. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like some sort of just ambiguous, like, struggle between good and evil is fun, but it's boring most of the time, right? Yeah. When someone's motivation is they'll kill everybody on the planet because they're trying to get someone that they love or protect someone they love, that always makes a lot more sense. So I felt like Wanda's motivation behind becoming the bad guy, mm -hmm. right, and to the point where she will literally kill an innocent child in order to get the power to get her children back. Mm -hmm. It was a good plot narrative. I'm just surprised that Sam Raimi, who directed this, didn't knock it out of the park for some reason. He's usually like a really good director. He did Spider-Man 2, which was one of the better mm -hmm. Marvel films ever. Um, I don't know. It just, I liked, like I said, parts. Like I liked mm -hmm. the kind of horror scenes with Love Scarlet Witch, where she was like 
stalking Doctor Strange in America. Oh, when she was like going through like the puddles, like she's yeah. like, oh, I see your reflection. I think somebody online, they're like, so Wanda just penny wised everybody. Kind of, <laughs> right. Like I got that vibe and I like that. I appreciated that because it was different and it, it added like a like a horror aspect and, like, to it. Like for me personally, combining the two things that I enjoy most into like one, I was like, yes, this is everything. But yes, there were its flaws. But again, I went in going, yes, sure. I don't care if it's called Doctor Strange or Scarlet Witch's movie. Yeah, it kind of <laughs> was, honestly. Like she was the bad guy. Strange kind of took the back seat throughout most of it. Not only because of obviously Wanda, but because of America Chavez. Yeah. Um, I felt like her character was a little bit lacking as well. She was kind of just like the damsel in distress the whole time. Also, I want to nitpick for the amount of shit that she went through throughout the entire movie and how everyone was constantly trying to get her and kill her. Mm -hmm. She was immaculate at the end when she was on the uh, like that seance table, not a scratch. Her clothes were completely still clean. Her hair was just done up. Like she looked like she was ready to go out to a club. <laughs> but and, I mean, you had just been through a war. Like Wong had just been thrown over the side of a cliff. There's a literally <laughs> undead Doctor Strange trying to save you. And you are just completely clean. Like you just got out of the shower. It's continuity. Yeah. <laughs> like things like that bothered me. And, and I noticed them. I Listen, I was like that when I watched Iron Man 3. I had just like finished makeup school. And the one thing that I will never be able to watch this movie for is his little cut on his lip was coming off the entire movie. Ah, uh, it's like bad. And just uh, as somebody for me who knows how, who knew how to like just learned how to apply it and make it look seamless in a big movie like Iron Man three, that shouldn't have happened. Okay. <laughs> yeah, bad makeup work. That was one of those things. I'm like, I can't focus on the movie now. Yeah, I get you. I felt another couple of things. Like I felt like the opening kind of fight scene with that octopus was a bit corny. It's like a big monster was that was just, a bit corny. Uh, it was just the easiest way for them to introduce who she is and yeah. what's going on. Um, I, no, I, no, I don't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't mean the original uh, opening scene of the movie. The the kind of like the second opening scene where Strange is at uh, Christine's wedding. Okay. And then the octopus comes out. It kind of felt like a retread of what happened in Avengers, where okay. like on the Upper West Side, where the Sanctum <laughs> is, an alien Everything thing comes there. on the street, and then here comes Doctor Strange into the street again and he's gonna fight this thing in front of everybody Ooh, wow like we're rehashing that doctor well, the, strange but the is thing a hero. Is, is like you could tell he didn't want to like he just kind of was trying to not be doctor strange the like magician he wanted to be he person. just wanted to be like doctor strange the actual surgeon yeah going to his friend's Stephen wedding strange, and unfortunately sure. it just didn't happen yeah um but that seems to happen in every single one of these movies. Everybody's trying to live a normal life, and then somebody comes to destroy the world. Yeah. <laughs> I, another, another thing I felt like uh, they were trying to explore, but they didn't do a great job, is his own love story angle, right? Like, they they mm -hmm. teased it with the, like, are you happy question to him. But I mean, like, I didn't, like, everything that happened throughout the entire movie, like, I didn't, I just didn't see where it fit towards the end when he asked Wong again. He's like, are you happy? Like, I didn't get anything from it. I don't, I don't understand. I don't think he has an answer. It was just like, do you see what I mean? Like it was just yeah. out of place. I understand they're trying to say like a motivating factor for Dr. Strange is that he loves Christine, Christine. and that I was love his, you in every universe. Right. Exactly. But it just didn't that grab. Seems, I don't know. But that seems to be his only storyline. And it even happened in what if everything he does right. led back to Christine and no matter what, he does not end up with Christine. Okay. And I think that's his, only storyline mm -hmm. now that he's no longer the Sorcerer Supreme. So I'm going to say that the What If episode with Doctor Strange was way better than this movie, in my yeah. opinion, at least. It, the story was good. The motivation was there. The The downfall of the character, him coming into, mm -hmm. you know, becoming a Dark Strange was awesome. It's kind of sad that the cartoon was better than the movie, <laughs> in my opinion. They, they could have done it better. I but don't know. I, I think it's the fact that they picked two main characters to follow in one movie yeah that is true because normally iron man is iron man captain america it's captain america plus bucky right um thor it's thor plus loki this one it was dr strange and wanda and they couldn't split it up evenly enough yeah like it's it's two avengers are the main characters but now they're like villains of each other i guess they're villains of each other but it was it's different like they are like okay here's Especially for those who didn't watch WandaVision, which obviously everybody should do before watching this movie. Um, they're like, we not need to kind of give you a little bit of what's going on. But here's her entire storyline in this entire movie. 
here's Doctor Strange. Here's her, his entire storyline in this entire movie. Because the only time they, like, show Doctor Strange is when he's, like, being questioned. Mm-hmm. And when he's, like, flying through the universes. Right. The rest of the time, the main... Even though it's Doctor Strange, the main focus is Wanda. Yeah, it was. It was. Which they were always constantly being stalked by Wanda. Yeah. Basically, since from the point where he goes to meet with her and, and talk with her. he goes to meet her. with her and he's like, I need your help. And he goes, yeah, like, just bring America here. And he go- and she's like, wait, you never told me her name. And then there we go. Right. Wanda's the bad guy. I-, I did think they portrayed Wanda good again. Like, the whole her stalking them mm-hmm. throughout the entire thing. Like, you felt her presence even if yeah. she wasn't on screen. Like, the time the clock was ticking and that she was coming mm-hmm. and that you knew she... Like, we knew... When they went to, like, Comitage and they're like, yeah, she's coming. Right. Like- and then, you know, he goes into the other universes and you know, like, she's mm-hmm. definitely working on trying to get there. The other thing that I need to point out in terms of her villain origin story, she's possessed by the Darkhold. That is true. So that was while major... her intentions are her intentions, the evilness behind her intentions were coming from the book. Sure. Because once that book is cracked, she kind of breaks a little bit, but now she's just looking for that same book in a different universe. Okay, that's true. Because she feels like she can't do what she needs to do without it. Because mm-hmm. that's how she had to do the day dream walking the dream walking right. yeah i was gonna say daydreaming and i was like that's not right so an- another plot point i felt was kind of lame or not explored was that book the good book the the mm-hmm. antithesis or whatever to the, the, Vashani, the, the shanti the, book the, of Vashanti. right i mean they build you know it was the it was in the opening scene of the mm-hmm. movie they build it as i need this thing in order to become powerful Full enough to defeat mm-hmm. the dark hold and Wanda, and then they never get it. They get to it, and then I don't even know kind of what happened. Like Wanda shot something at him, right? Or, I think or what it got, happened? Like, stabbed or something. It got stabbed and like, like it burnt up. And Doctor Strange kind of like sadly looked at it, and then the story just that continued on. And books it, done. And there's only one in the entire universe, apparently. Yeah, I don't know. Understand? All the like again, they built it up to be some some important tool that Doctor Strange needed, and then it just I think it went the pages to prove that they didn't away. actually need it. Yeah, I guess. I, I think that's essentially what it was. You know, the powers with it. Sure. I, I think that's essentially what it was because it's supposed to help her figure out her po- uh, help America figure out her power or something. Mm-hmm. She figured it out on her own. Growth. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, I, I think maybe there was too much going on. Too many characters that were trying to explore at the same time. Kind of a similar problem that uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier had. Yeah. Like they spent too much time with each character, but not enough time at the same time. Yeah. It was very weird. It was two and a half hours which is like an average mcu sure. movie but i i could have sat for another like half hour maybe yeah just yeah. to like just so they can complete a little bit more mm-hmm. which apparently they did cut out a good Some. 30 minutes of the movie they cut did you notice they cut out the uh dark strange when they were like when he was like you know what happened he's like things just got out of hand they, they cut do, that out they yeah. always do that in commercials in the trailers i think the same thing happened for endgame there's like a scene where it was um bruce in the hulk smasher you don't see it in the commercial, but you see it in the movie. Yeah. Well, that was so, that was misdirection on purpose. So yeah, but yeah. this one might have also been misdirection on purpose. So it's just kind of you know yeah, they just kind of pick and choose what goes into the preview mm-hmm. and what goes into the movie. Even though, granted, the last preview gave away the entire Illuminati scene, right. and that pissed me off. Yeah. I wish I didn't watch it. Yep. Um, that is another one of my crit- criticism of this movie, and it's going to go into it. Because too many trailers. Too many trailers. With too much information. Marvel makes the trailers, right? So they know what they're doing. They spoiled their own movie. You know, spoiler warning, if you if you, you know if you haven't seen it by now, I don't know far. why. Yeah. <laughs> the Illuminati are in it, and I pretty much knew every single person that was going to be there before we got there. I, you know, I didn't. I, I didn't know anything about the Illuminati. The only Illuminati I know is, you know, Beyonce. Okay, but I'm the saying... The actual, like, Illuminati. Right. I'm saying I knew who was going to be there because of the trailers. So, like, you know, you, they, they showed you in the trailer that there was going to be an Illuminati, number mm-hmm. one, right? And that they were, like, the Ultron robots. Mm-hmm. Then they showed you another trailer where Professor X's hand and his voice... You see so the, you, like, thing. Yeah, so you knew he was there. There was the rumors of uh, Tom Cruise. That didn't happen. Uh, that one I never believed. And, Every time somebody sure. was like, "Oh, that's like he's fight," they're fighting. What is it? Supreme Iron Man, Superior mm. Iron Man, whatever, whatever it's supposed to be. I was like, "No, that's Captain Marvel." Like right. I was just able to tell that it was Captain Marvel. Everybody's like, "No, no." The one that pissed me off was the shield. Yeah, Captain Carter was yeah. Captain Carter's shield because, again, I had no idea who's a part of the Illuminati. So I gen genuinely, besides the preview of Professor X making an appearance, and I saw a video of him at the premiere. Um, I literally had no idea, but then I saw the trailer and her shield goes through the wall, and I was like, "Yeah, that was Come on. on. That was supposed to be like a, such a big, exciting moment." They, they <laughs> spoil the only things you, the only like 
multiversal characters that you were going to be excited were spoiled. were spoiled ahead of time. Like a different version of Captain Marvel. Eh, who cares? Like we're already seen Captain Marvel. It's because there is a comic version and it is Monica that like, yeah, not Monica. I get it's it. It's Maria. Um, Mar- Mar- yeah. So I think that was just their way of like getting her in there without the, people like, you know, the questioning. Inhumans guy cares, you know, like was that Black the, Bolt? Black Bolt, he's like the Indian guy. Was. There was like an awful TV show they tried. To, I think My, I don't even know. It was so bad. I never watched it. Never, it might have something to do. Never with even that. heard of it. The biggest thing was the fan service by casting John Krasinski as Reed Richards. That was the that was one of those like things that fans just wanted, mm-hmm. but was never confirmed or denied. So, question: Was he in any? Was he Reed Richards in any of the other no. movies? No. So this is just a complete the recast. The other Reed of Richards him. were Miles Teller and the guy from the okay. Jessica Alba one. That's okay. how much I right. don't remember who the actor is. So, do we think that there John is Krasinski a is potential for for him to be actually Mister Fantastic in a new version of? Um, if they have John Krasinski playing him in another universe because he died. Okay. No, that's what I'm saying. Right? Maybe like the MCU version of him. Because that died. Right. So is there a chance, possibly, and mm. they just, because obviously um, Elizabeth Olsen plays Wanda in every single universe. Sure. So it is possible that there is another John Krasinski, mm-hmm. Mr. Fantastic out there. Yeah, probably. Uh, maybe that will be him. Again. And as we could see, um, what's his name, plays Professor X and everything. With the exception yeah. of the new movies. Well, he's he's <laughs> iconic. You can't... Uh, they had to use him. I did like his scene where he tried to get into Wanda's head to help her. Yeah. Felt very Professor And then X-like. got his head sliced in half. Yeah. There, that was disappointing. I did see it slow down in our world. His neck cracked. In the actual dream world, his whole head got like split in half. Jesus. When you slow it down, you see yeah. it. And I was like, oh. So again, man, like the Scarlet Witch, she was menacing. They built up all those characters. It felt kind of cheesy. She just walked in, obliterated them well, all in a split so, second. The thing that I also, so within that, you know, the Illuminati's universe, they're saying Stephen Strange is the ultimate bad guy, which based on what we're seeing, he is like, he's bad in almost every universe. Mm -hmm. They, he's like, no, the problem is Wanda. Their universe is Wanda is just a mom. Right. So they were expecting that Wanda. They were not expecting our universe who now is like as strong as you could possibly get, which is why they were not prepared and defeated right. so quickly. Yeah. I will say Peggy Car- Carter getting sliced in half yeah, that was, was not expected. No. I was like, yeah. oh. Yeah, I know. The, the, the way, like, they did them dirty. Like, those tonos. The, those the deaths in this yeah. movie were a lot more intense than I'm used, used to. Used to for MCU. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, they had a different vibe because of Sam Raimi, definitely. I think it was Jessica. Somebody pointed it out to me. The um, Captain Carter shield with the blood is kind of like an homage to when you, it's the Captain America shield is all bloody and... Uh, okay. Falcon and Winter Soldier. I always want to say Captain America and Winter Soldier. Because, um, like, that's the only time you've ever seen blood on the shield. On the shield. And then it was in this movie, too. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I, wonder, little, I wonder if there's some symbology little, behind that or something like that. One, one thing. One thing it's I, used for evil. <laughs> right. May, right. Maybe. Could be. Uh, I, I felt another thing that was kind of distracting was America Chavez's name. Her name being America. And I felt like there was a couple really. <laughs> and Sam Raimi is known to inject patriotism into his movies. Isn't in the that past. her name? Yes, it is. It is. But there were a couple of scenes where they were like, America, you need to find your power or something like that. I don't pick up on those things. I did. Right. And I was like, (laughs) oh, my God, this is so corny. And knowing Sam Raimi, like if you remember the old Spider-Man films, they always ended with like Spider-Man on the Empire State Building with the American (laughs) flag in the background. I'm a patriotic dude, like America, etc. But just for the time we're in right now, I don't know. It just felt kind of corny where they were like emphasizing like they were talking to the character but maybe they were kind of talking like, to america in general <laughs> because a lot of people watch these films i don't know i just felt like some of those scenes were really cheesy see that's something i would never have picked up on sure sure i, get it. I, get it. <laughs> I don't know I, I'm, I'm a nerd when it comes to that stuff i of pick course. up all the little details so what did you think one of the interesting things of course is the multiverse right mm-hmm. and i felt like maybe we didn't get enough like theorizing validation from anything that we saw from the multiverse Besides where they were like going through multiple mm-hmm. multiverses and you were kind of seeing like different possibilities. Mm-hmm. That was kind of interesting. I do recall one of them was a cartoon universe. Yes. So and that I want was the same animation style as into the Spider-Verse. As into the Spider-Verse. So again, do you think that's something I pick up on is like the like animation style. So that right. one I could tell was the exact same kind of drawing mm-hmm. style. I if you know, 
Marvel wants to make another TV show, give me one about each individual universe. Kind of like What If, Mm -hmm. but just like little snippets from this movie and just like sprinkle it in. Because we we just got them flying through. So it's just like they're not doing anything. They're just going universe to universe. Well, they're acknowledging that they're there. I guess you could say, you know, like from the MCU point of view. He's breaking up in this one. He's a cartoon in this one. Um, so so with, with that, I'm, I'm trying to focus on the Spider-Verse, mm-hmm. right? If you haven't seen it, uh, Into the Spider-Verse was mm-hmm. a great movie. Um, do you think they've now given themselves the in to bring Miles Morales into the MCU with some sort of reverse logic where he's pulled he's out going in. of the uh, car- the cartoon universe? And as we saw when Strange went into the cartoon universe, mm-hmm. he became a cartoon. So if you were to go into the Spider-Verse and pull Miles Morales out of there, turn he would turn action. into a live action person. And if you've ever seen the actor who plays Miles Morales, he looks like he looks exactly like the cartoon character that they mm-hmm. drew up. He's a little bit older because, yeah. but, but I mean, they could, you know, some years have passed or something. I like definitely that. think it's possible. Um, especially since there is a whole second movie coming out. Mm-hmm. It's possible that they might play into it, especially with the la- way the last Spider-Man was where they can just kind of pull people from right. any universe. So what's to say that he, the cartoon one, can't also be pulled in? Okay. Yeah, I think that's a possibility, definitely. They might have just kind of set that, set the stage for yeah. that. Yeah, which I think would actually be pretty interesting. And I think they have, somebody somewhere has hinted at that it's a possibility. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I have no expectation. Okay. So we don't get disappointed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I had a lot of expectations. Um, one, of the, one other scene I thought was really dope was when Good Strange for dark strange and they have like a a musical note (laughs) battle battle. that was really outside the box thinking in terms Mm -hmm. of just like cgi and a fight and how they just lifted musical notes (laughs) off the paper and shot them at each other other. and when they did they were kind of playing homage to he's a wizard it's dark it was like beethoven and he was throwing him i thought it was well done it was really just different. I like that I, the little high note on the harp was the like end off. Yes, right. Like, so bing. stuff like that. That I, <laughs> I appreciate. That was like a little tiny detail. I enjoyed. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, the ending didn't do it for me. When we, you know, we get over to the ending, it was kind of weird that Strange did the uh, the dream walking thing to him dead With body. The dead body. It Apparently, was like that is like the worst thing he could have done. Because all of the like mm, those demons of hell spirits, were like yeah. coming for him because he wasn't supposed to do that, but then somehow sucked them back in and used them to his advantage. Right. You see what I mean? Like it, it, but it created an almost inconsistencies this, and like you know, like I didn't know this what goes, those ghosts were. But this really. goes into the end of this Doctor Strange now ending up with the eye, jumping ahead. That could be what causes him to be the evil Doctor Strange. Is he is using the dark hold? And now he becomes bad. So this could go into what the Illuminati is saying is every Stephen Strange is bad. Mm-hmm. Whether this one intends to be or not. Which is a he product of what happens to, to them. It's like what we're saying. What if Iron Man is meant to die no matter what happens? Stephen Strange is not meant to be with Christine no matter what happens. Sure. What did you call that? A minute point in time? An absolute, absolute point, point in, time. in time. right? Yes. So I think no matter what the universe is, he's meant to be bad. Yeah. Whether yeah. our Strange wants to be. We're seeing, as his story plays out, the epic downfall of the of character. Him. Maybe it'll end. His story will end with him becoming actually a bad Illuminati guy the universe, future. they had to kill him. The evil one that we saw, bad. Doctor Strange right. and What If, bad. Like, no matter what, mm-hmm. his character always ends up bad, even though this one really doesn't want to be. Sure. He was doing bad things to be good. Right. But he's still doing bad things. I, and they kind of referenced that even his decision in Endgame, right? The uh, the other doctor who sat with him in the church, mm-hmm. and he was like, you know, did it have to be this way? Kind of yeah. Ask him some. You know, he's like, was like this that. the only way that it had to be done? Right. Yes. And then even. But you really know that for certain. You know, what I mean, like so, we're just taking Doctor Strange's word I, for it. I just watched Endgame for like the fifty millionth time today. <laughs> um, what's her name? The ancient one, even said, "Did I make a mistake?" Because she knew right. five years from that time point, this is back in 2012, she knew, she was like, did I make a mistake? Because she already knew she was going to pick Doctor Strange. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's performing surgery. He gave up the stone. Why would he do that? I don't know. Did I? He goes, maybe he made a sta- mistake. Sure. And she says, no, maybe I did. Okay. So Strange might just not actually be a good person. He might be the bad guy, and Wanda is being blamed for it. I do like that angle of the story because it, it makes it deep, right? Yeah. Like it's you it's gotta like think. A, you got to think, and it's like the tragic, 
you know, downfall of like your hero. Mm-hmm. It's always a good storyline. So I do like that the possibility of that. We might be onto something, <laughs> and maybe he, his, we'll come back to it if I'm ever in, right in a few years. Yeah, <laughs> I was well, you right were, about Wanda. You were right about Wanda. Right about yeah, maybe <laughs> Wanda will, will. You know, you want to talk about storylines? Wanda's going to have to have a redemption arc, right? Unless they're just going to keep banging her over the head as a villain for this other other woman, stories. She doesn't kill herself. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was. She literally has. She needs therapy. <laughs> um, she literally has nothing left. Yeah. She has no brother. She has no parents. She has no home. Her lover is gone. Her kids don't really exist in her universe. All she had left was her magic and her hopes of getting her children just to realize they would be scared of her if she mm-hmm. actually took them from another universe. Well, because of the way she was behaving. That's right? also what it was. Honestly, even from the get-go when she said that was her plan, was to just like go and be their mom, the kids are going to know you're not their mom. Right. Whether she went in all crazy or not, they were like, she saw the fear in their eyes, and that made her realize, like, I can't do it like this as much as she wants her children. Sure. Maybe just, like, possess the, possess your little cabin and make them reappear. Right. Do it again. Yeah. And right. You don't I mean, that's possess a, people. That's a kind of a plot hole, right? You could have just <laughs> reconjured them up again. Good you conjured you? up a whole apple orchard. Yeah. You're telling me you can't reconjure up your children in a field? Yeah. Wanda's story is <laughs> not over either. Uh, no. You know, the White Vision did survive and leave i did think wanda did die but somebody pointed out to me when the the mountain like crashed like a little puff of red came out so she might have just like yeah disappeared. No, she's her, her story is definitely not over of course as much as i wanted my tattoo to make sense dead vision dead wanda yeah no i don't think so <laughs> i think wanda will return um so let's let's uh let's give it a rating before we go into the end credit scenes what would you think out of 10 i want to say seven and a half okay um on it obviously it, most of my points are because Wanda is the main character, and I love her with all my heart. Um, I did genuinely enjoy the story. Did it have its bits and pieces that were missing and a little just kind of not rounded out well? Sure. Like, let's put it that way. But overall, I was excited for it. I enjoyed it. I will watch it again. Okay. Probably 50 times. Fair enough. Uh, I'm going to give it a 6.16 <laughs> because that is the number the universe of in? universe that I guess we or the MCU, MCU takes place in. are in. Uh, I didn't think it was great. It was just kind of meandering through like a murky plot. Uh, mm-hmm. You put it well. It, it, there was some things. It wasn't well rounded, I guess, in certain yeah. areas. But there were good parts. Like certain scenes were cool. They were well done. Uh, I wasn't impressed with the, the ending or the overall story. That's about it. Six point one six. Let's get on to the uh, after credit scenes. There were two. First one or the second one? First let's just, one. Let's just go with the second one. That was awful and a waste of an end credit scene. Yes. I uh, will say most of the it time. It was funny, but the second end credit scene is always more joke. comical. Yeah. Because I will always remember the shawarma scene from the first Avengers. Sure. And then I think the Howard the Duck from like the yes. first of the Galaxy. I so thought it was funny. The it guy, is funny. The guy that Strange enchanted earlier in the I movie. I will be completely honest. Punched I himself, completely though. forgot about that man. So did I. Until we got there. And he was like, okay, it's over now. Which is basically telling everybody, leave. Yeah. <laughs> um, I d- well, so uh, uh, one thing I want to say is uh, we had to go see this in movie theater. Boy, I hate going to movie theaters nowadays. <laughs> I mean, people have gotten worse. There was some asshole sitting behind me who would not show up the entire movie. He had to comment on everything that happened as if we were all there watching it, you know, right with our own two eyes. Um, however, at the end, this guy did make a good point. He said, ah, oh, they're breaking the fourth wall, which is the, yeah. the uh, you know, the movie to you. It is a, a movie about the multiverse of, you know, I, speaking it could of, be, just be a joke. It could mean nothing. Speaking of, I'm rewatching WandaVision. There's a scene. Vision looks at the camera at one point. In this movie, Wanda did look at the camera. I think it was right after she took over, when Scarlet Witch took over Wanda, she kind of glanced at the camera real quick and then walked away. Mm -hmm. So I think it was just to like let us know, like, perhaps they are. This is the one you're supposed to be watching. Or perhaps are they going to morph it into the characters, or starting to realize that they are in a movie, or that they are we are observing them. Kind of like. When we were watching WandaVision and Darcy's like, oh my God, it's a TV show. Right. <laughs> and, and and maybe they spin it into, has something to do with the universe, yeah, another, the multiverse. Oh, the Watchers. Right. Something They're like, like wait, that. the Watcher's watching. Right. They, they acknowledge us like as being part, of, to try and make it feel like the MCU is a real place that actually exists because the characters and have now acknowledged that they are in a movie and they've, like, they've become sentient yeah. almost in a I'm sense. I'm not sure if I made it up 
but I feel like in one of the uni- when they were flying through the universes, just to throw back a little bit, I think at one point they're flying through and there's like multiple watchers. Maybe I think it was it was one of those quick yeah, flashes quick, yeah. within the universes, and again I'd have to see it again. Sure, but I think that did happen. Like okay. it just looked like again I might be making this up and I might just be wishing that that's what happened. But I genuinely think they were flying through and there was a bunch of people watching them and then they went into a whole other universe again. Yeah, we'll be watching. We'll, uh, we'll we gotta find we'll it. catch those little ones. <laughs> so, so the other end credit scene, I mean, a oh, hole opens. His, yeah. In he, like, he gets his third eye. Yeah, he gets his third eye. And Which then, goes back to my he is evil. Yeah. Whether maybe. he wants to be or not. Was the end credit the other end credit scene with uh, the 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 blonde woman, or was that just right at the end, or was that? Yes. So that's when he. I had to look it up. It's Clea, and according to Danny, she is Dormammu's niece. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. Just they horseshoed something in there. Be like, hey, Doctor Strange, you want to go on an adventure? Yeah, and then he just like jumps into a portal and it's gone. It just felt corny to me. I did kind of notice that the portal or whatever she came out of Mm -hmm. reminded me of dormammu like the color scheme that's what she's supposed to be kind of again this is from somebody this is not from me this is somebody who actually read the comics and knows a little Mm. bit more than i do all right i just know the mcu knowledge he knows everything else it didn't wow me didn't do anything for me didn't know who the chick was didn't know what she wanted what was going on felt kind of corny that third eye thing though goes into my theory we'll come back and see if Mm. i'm right or not but i think the third eye just shows that now he has so you got your two eyes, you got your good, you got your bad, and then you got the evil. This mm, depends on what the you believe The evil eye. It's ah, the evil eye. Okay. The dark Doctor Strange had that. Sure. So, what's to say? I, I think there is a uh, aspect, to, obviously, to the Dark Hold that is similar to the One Ring from the Lord of the Rings. Yeah. I'm not a big Lord of the Rings fan, but once you I, hold I the ring, a general amount, decent amount. Even you know the purest uh, intentioned person will eventually be corrupted by the ring. You know, but that's because exactly it's, what happened. So happened to Wanda. Actually, it happened to Agatha first. Agatha Harkness, right. she had the dark hold, and she was using it to steal other witches' powers. Wanda got it. She was go- doing everything dark to get her children back. Everything dark with good intention. Doctor Strange, also dark with good intention. He was not supposed to possess a dead body, but that was the only option he had, sure. which I did enjoy the zombie Doctor Strange aspect of it. Yeah, it was interesting. It was different. It, it wasn't my favorite zombie. I would have loved a different zombie, but you know. I, saw, of, I remember a lot of people were like theorizing that it was zombie Wanda, but it's like, no, this is just like a regular Wanda just running in mom jeans. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, they kind of almost made it. They per, almost sort of portrayed it like zombie Wanda made from it kind what of like her. A little bit. It's in the dark. She has blood and she's yeah. like limping and right. red eyes. Like that was, it was all cool. You saw. I, li- I like that scene. Like I said, the, the stalking, Wanda stalking mm-hmm. everybody, I enjoyed. I thought it was well done and it was uh, menacing, definitely. Yeah. I, I like the scene when she first got to, was it? Comitage? I can never. Comitage, yeah. I can never pronounce it right. When like they all have the shields up, but they just re- like they don't comprehend how strong she is that she was able to basically astral project herself beyond it yeah, and destroy like, them all from inside without yeah, actually like temp- lifting a finger. Tempt them, right? Like like almost like a Jedi mind trick, like on their mind. Yeah, yeah I thought that was cool, man. Wanda definitely is probably. I mean, strange references there, right? Like Avenger. Of, I don't care yeah. What, what did he says. say? Like one of the most powerful magic users in the entire universe, or something like, stronger, like that. Stronger. I think yeah. he said that she is either equivalent to or stronger than the Sorcerer Supreme. Yeah. So we'll see. Like I said, her story definitely is not over. I think we wrap it up there. Uh, yeah. Thank you for uh, watching our doomed review. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We are going to be also reviewing Moon Knight. So if you haven't seen that, I suggest you do. And uh, check it out. We've Me and Shane have reviewed a lot of other Marvel things as well. So yes. check those out. Two Doom Men Podcast. Later. Bye.